Sports fans, and welcome to Matty Egan's Portable, the Super Bowl special. So, we're going to get straight into it because we've got a lot of uh, celebrities and special guests that have uh, joining us on this show. And I'm starting off with none other than the former chairman of the North Melbourne Football Club. He's also a personal English and grammar teacher to a, name, a man by the name of uh, Billy Brownless, and he's an AFL media commentator. Good morning, James Brayshaw. Matty, how are you, mate? Very well, thank you. So, thank you very much for being on this Super Bowl episode. Pleasure. Now, I'm going to start off because how is I, I get a lot of, I cop a lot of uh, flack for being a New York Jets fan, but I don't think that I would cop as much as you being a Cleveland Browns fan. How did that happen? I oh, know, I oh, know. Well, my younger brother Robert and I, oh, I had my older brother Mark as well, we're all mad NFL fans, but um, Mark supports Tampa Bay, which I find absolutely staggering, but Robert and I always were Cleveland fans because... We first really found the game back in the mid-80s when it used to be on the ABC. I reckon Don Lane used to host uh, an hour, hour and a half on a, like a Tuesday night. Correct, uh, yes. Up the, up the week. And at that stage in the mid-80s, the Browns were actually pretty bloody good. Marty Schottenheimer was the coach and Bernie Kosar. He had to throw sidearm but was a really good quarterback. In fact, I would argue the last season quarterback had um, but if you rattle through the names that played for the Browns in the mid-80s, you know, like Reggie Langhorn, Ozzie Newsom, Clay Matthews, Kevin Mack, Ernest Biner, Frank Minifield, um, you know, Webster Slaughter, the wide receiver, still, in my opinion, maybe the greatest name of any football ever. Um, and then a little bit later on, Eric Metcalf and Michael Dean Perry. I mean, we had a really good side. Yeah. They got to the championship game two years in a row. And Robert and I were just enamoured with not only, you know, the players, but... The whole story behind the joint, you know, the dog pound, the fact that we wore brown and orange and white, which are close to the worst colours in world sport, <laughs> somehow. So, you know, ever since then, we've been brown fans. And sadly, that was the last time we had any joy because post that, it's just gone horribly wrong. And of course, we've just had a season where we haven't won a game. So, uh, but a bit like the AFL, once you've got a team, you can't change. And uh, we're committed to the journey. Tell, tell me, I remember listening on the, the Rush Hour one, one afternoon, the story of when you bought a jersey while you are in the States. Can you tell us that story? Oh, yeah. Well, I was actually in New York, and um, as you know, in Times Square, they've got a couple of massive sports stores, you know, like huge, big, almost acre-long things, and they sell everything over there, you know, from guns, as we know, to all sorts of things <laughs> in sports stores. Anyway, I walked in, and uh, I was in this huge NFL sort of section, so I went up, and I couldn't find anything from Cleveland. So this beautiful lady walked up and she said to me, you know, can I help you, honey? You know, and that sort of New York draw. And I said, look, I'm after a Cleveland Brown, anything for the Cleveland Browns, because I wanted to take it home. And she just looked at me and paused and she said, Cleveland Browns? You've got to be kidding me. <laughs> oh, shit. Lady, you got to have something in here for the Browns. She said, we never sell anything for the Cleveland Browns. <laughs> so that was a sort of an insight into how hard it is, unless you're in Cleveland, to get anything. Yes. You know, with, uh, you know, my team. No, you're 100% correct because I remember when I was at the Pro Bowl in Hawaii and um, and uh, all these other people, they saw a guy in a, tra- a Detroit Lions jersey and everyone was just sort of pointing the finger and laughing at him because they thought yeah. that that was just unheard of as well. So, yeah. yeah. Well, there are some un- sort of fashionable franchises in the NFL and Cleveland, one of them, you're either a locked on Cleveland fan. I went with Damien Barrett actually years ago and watched us play Seattle at uh, in Cleveland, which is still one of my great sporting experiences. And uh, Cleveland won the game, if you don't mind, 6 3. Oh, so wow. Two field goals. So, as they say in, the, uh, in the, you know, the pro ranks, it might be the worst game ever played, <laughs> which I find hilarious. I don't know, uh, Matty, are you able to edit what we're doing here? So, am I able to swear or not? Mate, you go, this is YouTube TV, we can do whatever we want. Well, we, the day and I finished watching the game. We went back to Cleveland, an amazing city, and we went back and had a, a beer in one of the thousand bars that ever all the fans sort of spill into. And we're just sitting there chatting, and these two old blokes had their uh, Cleveland gear on, and they were sitting there having a beer, and Damon and I having a beer, and we're you know, a metre away from each other. And they obviously picked up on the accent, you know, and they're like, where are you two from? And we're like, uh, Melbourne. 
And they're like, Jesus, man, what are you doing in Cleveland? You know, and was, Dave, I was used to tell me, oh, this guy's a mad Cleveland fan. So we're here to watch the game. And they said, oh, did you enjoy it? And yeah, we had a ball. And anyway, as the conversation was lining up, this old gruff old bloke who hadn't said much just turned to the two of us and said, oh, well, we really showed those fucking Seahawks. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. Uh, against the Bills, and it doesn't matter who it is, but if it's your team, it's even more special. Absolutely, and uh, mate, I love your passion. I actually never knew that you, you had this much passion for towards the NFL. Oh, yeah, I love it, mate. I've always loved it. All right. Unfortunately, so, we're so foxy that you never see us on telly, but uh, now with the, uh, the NFL live app, you can, you can watch the Red League Island. Oh, mate, it's just unbelievable because I used to, the only NFL I used to get was the Don Lane show, like you said. Yeah, that's it. And I had to stay up late and then I'd, you know, I'd be pretty tired when I went to De La Salle College the next morning. <laughs> yes, that's it. Oh, well, we did exactly the same thing. Now, JB, the biggest game in American sports, it's coming up next Monday. For Australians, it's great because you get to take the Monday off. Um, we've got the New England Patriots taking on the Philadelphia Eagles um, in Minnesota, in Minneapolis, in a brand new stadium, which is just absolutely sensational. Give us, well, do you think that Philadelphia have got a chance here? Oh, yeah. Well, I think they're the fourth-ranked defensive team for the year and the Patriots are fifth. So, you know, as they say, um, in the States, you know, uh, offense fills the stands and defense fills your trophy cabinet. Yes. So, you know, there's there, there's got to be something in that. And mind you, they're taking on the man. Um, I'm not a fan of, of New England, uh, probably because of the same reason I'm not really a fan of Hawthorne, because they keep winning all the time. Yeah. It's just annoying, you know, and they do everything right and their best practice everywhere and, you know, I actually have huge admiration for, for the Hawthorne Footy Club and you've got to admire the New England Patriots. But I'm riding Philadelphia like a bull because I love the story. For me, it's a bit like Cleveland Cavaliers when you a couple of years ago. Yeah. Um, you know, LeBron going back and, and, and bringing a trophy to a city that hasn't had one forever. Yes, it's, it's Philadelphia, a Philadelphia, as we know, have been starved of any joy across all of the sports forever. So, um, I, you know, and it's, and it's fighter town and Rocky and the steps and, you know, it's just a... I've never been to Philadelphia. I've been to the airport um, to change planes, but I've never actually got out and had a look. But I've always been fascinated with, you know, it's a hard ass sort of working town, and I reckon it's one of those joints that would just go nuts if they could win. So whether they're capable of it or not, I don't know, but I'd love to see that. Yeah, I totally agree with you. Um, being a Jets supporter, I'm not really rooting for the New England Patriots. So <laughs> I, I, I most certainly would love to see Philadelphia take this one out. And um, I think um, New England are a bit like Manchester United, aren't they? If you either love them and are passionate about them or you absolutely detest them. Yeah, there was a stage, you know. It's the same in England. You go to any of the Premier League games over there and people just want to see Man United beat them unless they're a fan of Man U. And then they obviously are as passionate as New England fans are. It says a lot for how you know, unbelievably successful with me. Yeah, totally agree with you. And it was a little bit similar with having Hawthorne play in so many premierships as well. So uh, I, I am rooting with the Philadelphia Eagles. Now, we're going to have um, Tiffany Cherry's going to break down the, uh, the New England Patriots. And then yeah. um, we've had uh, we've got Wayne Schwass coming on the show and he's going to talk a little bit about men's health. And we want to get yeah. that strong message out there. I think he's doing a, se- a sensational job with yeah, that. Yep. And we'll finish off with Colin Scott, who's going to break down the Philadelphia Eagles. So... Um, fair uh, talent coming up and they'll be able to tell you all about what's going to happen. They know much more about those two sides than I do. But I did go to the Super Bowl and you won't believe it, Matty. I, I went and saw, in the last three Super Bowls, we've had two all-time games. You know, the Patriots and Seahawks and, you know, final moment, one of the most extraordinary sort of setups anyone's ever seen. And then you had the Patriots Falcons last year and the greatest comeback in, you know, playoff history or whatever it was. Yeah. I went to California, San Francisco, to watch Denver, Carolina, the worst Super Bowl of the last 20 years. That was shit. It was, it was just rubbish. Yeah. Sitting there, you know, with great mates, you know, flying in from all around the world. And I'm like, we have come from the other side of the world to watch this. It was just grinding them down. You know, we thought Carolina with the man, you know, the gunslinger, we're going to do all sorts of things anyway. We got on the train left and thought, Jesus, it's a long way to come for that. The, the- so, uh, you can be unlucky, but I reckon this one's got plenty of intrigue. Yeah, plenty of touchdowns, and um, I think you're right. And um, if they can, if Philadelphia can start well early and sort of uh, that, uh, and, and really sort of break 
the spirit of Tom Brady, which is bloody hard, I'll tell you that, then I think we're in for one hell of a, a Super Bowl in Minneapolis. So, well, that's the thing, mate. They've got to defend well. Because if you don't defend well against that mob, they can pile on. Uh, as we saw last year, they can pile on points very quickly. So, anyway, like you, mate, I'll be absolutely locked in Monday morning. I can't wait. Thank you very much for being on the show, James Brayshaw. We appreciate it very much. And uh, you, Maddie, I love what you're doing. Thank you very much. Take care. At BR International, it all starts with the buyer and the seller. Whether in Australia or overseas, we adjust our delivery solution to fit in with a buyer's requirements. We are able to consolidate orders from multiple suppliers and ship them directly to the end consumer, which in some cases is the store. These orders are split, quality controlled, checked and packed. The container is then sent for shipping via air or sea. BR International exports and imports on behalf of a number of different buyers around the world. The status of every order is updated via an online platform so the buyer can confirm at any stage along the supply chain where their goods are. On arrival, goods are either brought back to our delivery centre or they're delivered directly to the customer's premises. When delivered to BR International, a number of additional services can be added, from receiving and unpacking to relabeling and further quality control. BR International is your unique freight service. Contact us today. Our next guest is uh, someone that uh, is perfect for this episode, being Super Bowl 52, because not only has she worked as a presenter for the Olympics and Fox footy, she's actually worked in ESPN in the United States of America. So thank you for joining us on the Super Bowl episode, Tiffany Cherry. Hi, oh, Maddie. Gorgeous introduction. Thank you uh, for having me and great to follow Jimmy Boy. Uh, oh, not a problem. Yes, Sprayshaw gave us uh, a good reason on how he became a Cleveland Browns fan. And, um, right. Yep, so uh, the, he's got a lot to uh, you know say about that these days, but he did uh, bring up some great accolades of them in the 80s. So very passionate about his NFL. Yeah, well, I love it ever since I really started over at ESPN some uh, 10 years ago, but even prior to that, I used to travel a lot to the States and a friend of mine, um, played for Nebraska and so sort of straight out of high school he won a scholarship and was one of the first Aussies in fact to uh, play uh, high um, not high school but play college football so um, I loved it I went to a game in Nebraska against UCLA and you know I'd never seen anything like it, it was something like 85,000 people and the amount of money that this and we're talking you know 25 years ago the amount of money that was being thrown around is probably still more than the AFL has now so uh, fell in love with the game I think it's superb and you yeah, obviously followed a lot when I worked for ESPN in the States. Yeah, correct. You're spot on there because I believe college football is almost, uh, if not, maybe not as big as the Super Bowl, but college football on a week-to-week basis would probably be bigger than the NFL. Yeah. yeah, it's more passionate. You know, it's more tribal. Um, it's more, you know, they really, they, they really are heart and soul into their universities and they don't, while you can... Well, you know, you hope not to, but while you um, don't jump from, you know, Super Bowl team, you just never, ever, you know, let go of your college football team. That is correct, uh, yes. And and obviously, you know, a lot of the players, they play for that college team. So there's no sort of, you know, losing a player to another team, etc. Obviously happens occasionally, but it's not like what happens in the Super Bowl where players are traded and you see you know, a lot of movement even within season. So, yeah, it's incredibly tribal and it's just great. I just love watching their passion and, you know, you, you, when you go to a game and uh, you just see that come out, it's, it's. I mean, we have the passion here as well, but, um, you know, they just do it at a, at a, at a, in a different way. Well, here's, here's an interesting stat for you, Tiff. Did you know that, I mean, we think that it's amazing to fill out the MCG, which is about 98,000 uh, these days due to health, occupational health and safety. But on, on a, a certain game against another college, there are stadiums that will hold 100,000. Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying when I went to this college game. I think it was about oh, 1994 I went and, um, you know, it was just, I think it was 24 years ago and uh, there was over... 85,000 people in yeah. a college game in the middle of nowhere. That's yep, exactly. It's unbelievable. Now, speak- Lincoln, Nebraska. Yeah, anyway, yep. <laughs> Speaking of Pat Stadiums, um, I thought that you'd be the perfect person to talk about the New England Patriots because uh, I believe you did tell me the story that you were in. Um, I can't remember which Super Bowl it was, but you did see the Patriots and the Giants. Is that correct? I did. Well, the, the Pats were, what were they, 16 and 0, and then they lost. Super Bowl uh, in the dying 90 seconds. Um, Eli Manning became a superstar and obviously he's gone on to win a a few more Super Bowl rings. 
but it was, you know, I went there, I was um, moving from Australia to America and uh, moving to Connecticut, which is obviously smack bang in the middle of New York and um, and Boston. So everyone kept asking me who I was rooting for, which I found I took a little bit of umbrage to at the time, of course, and then I figured out what that meant. And then I, um, I said, well, you know, whoever wins. So uh, I ended up becoming a Giants fan, obviously, because of the, yeah, the, the final moments of that game. But it was it's regarded as one of the greatest, uh, one of the top three Super Bowls of all time. Yes, absolutely. And, well, you've actually seen the Patriots, um, you know, when they're doing their best on this special day, which is uh, Super Bowl 52 sure. in Minnesota. Yeah. So let's talk about, you know, how good are the Patriots? I mean, their accolades are just unbelievable. And the, the, the gig for the Philadelphia Eagles this Monday just seems like, wow. You know, if they're, well, yeah. they're well, going to... The Eagles haven't won yet, have they? You know, this is their third Super Bowl appearance. Um, just for you know, Bill Belichick and Tom Brady, who is just the star coach and the star quarterback. You know, this is, uh, I think it's something like, they come up to 20 years. I think it's about 18 years they've been together and they're going for their sixth you know, Vince Lombardi trophy. That is just beyond a joke. That is, yeah. They're so successful. Um, you know, it was without doubt. I mean, Brady was the, really the one that, you know, got them back into the game in last year's uh, Super Bowl against the Falcons. It was just a remarkable comeback. He is just can manufacture a win. He's one of those special players as a Macavanism that comes out and comes to the fore and he's worth every cent. Of course, um, you know, he's a, without doubt an, an international superstar in a, in this, this sphere of of where Tiger Woods and uh, you know and David Beckham is, yeah. Um, and and yeah, so th- so there's just so much going on for them. They're obviously their favourites to win, but you know both. What I just found it fascinating was they both finished not only their you know, their respective conferences with a 13 and three um, win loss ratio, but they were I think they were in terms of the points um, were pretty much exactly the same. There might have been one point difference, and I just found that incredible. Yeah, so the 162 plus points defence um, differential. Um, they both had, but there was exactly one point of difference uh, that the Pats had in scoring and allowing for a mm, score. Mm. So, you know, they, 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 they are neck and neck. This is one of the great Super Bowls on paper of all time in terms of just an offensive shootout, which is so exciting for people to watch. Um, but, you know, the, the Patriots know how to do it. They've been there before. Not only has the franchise been there, but... You know, Belichick and Brady led have been there many, many times over, and and they're defending champions. So, you know, I, well, the other thing too is um, I found this interesting that the Eagles they've, they've got a twenty seven million dollar offensive line um, in salary, yeah. and that's roughly ten million more than the Patriots. So, um, so they should win on paper in terms of what they're paying. But uh, you know, the Patriots uh, obviously you want to play for a franchise as well that keeps winning. So perhaps that's why they don't have to pay as much. Oh, it's the, the, some of these stats are scary. I mean, you got Brady who has thrown thirty-two touchdowns this season, mm. and he's only had eight interceptions at forty years of age. You know, yeah. and he's still doing this. So, it, it's it's you know everything is leading their way, um, and it's if, if if you were putting money on it, it'd be extremely hard to bet against the Patriots. But yeah. here's the X factor for me: Rob Gronkowski. And now I know that he's got the concussion, but I, I can pretty much guarantee that he's going to play. He's almost unstoppable. And he's like Tom Brady's uh, absolute get out of jail card. Yeah, he is. Yeah. Well, look, and without a doubt, and I mean, they're, they're, you know, they're small and they're skillful receivers. They're a matchup nightmare yep. in Philadelphia um, in, in, in every way possible. And and they just the, the the Eagles can't in any way give Brady any any inch of time, seconds of time to be able to pick and choose where he wants to throw. Like they just they have to be on him. Um, you know, they need to really force the Patriots to make the plays in their passing games. Um, but I, I, I just, I don't know. I mean, it, obviously they're favourites. I can't see, I can't see the Patriots losing. Now, do, do you have a connection in Philly? Is that correct? Oh, not really. Well, Paddy Steinman, who's, a, I mean, he's not a close mate, but he's a, he's a mate um, when I used to be physio at Richmond. Obviously, I'm now I'm back there, I'm working in a different capacity, but. Uh, he was playing, you know, he played a couple of years, but um, he's been overseas and he's the high-performance manager at the Eagles. Um, so, you know, that's obviously great for Australia. I don't know if it's really been come out yet, but um, he has he's done a lot of great things over in the States. Um, you know, I don't even know whether he'd be coming back, but if he, if he was, he'd be snapped up by just about every sporting franchise um, in Australia for, you know, the list of these credentials that he's got. But also... Um, you know, South Rocker, I actually, I went to the Eagles. A good friend of mine, in fact, was um, quite high up 
uh, recruiting at the Eagles when I lived in in America at ESPN, and um, so he invited me down. And I went and you know caught up with him, and then uh, at a different time, um, obviously Sav Sav was being managed by my best friend in the states, who's a top female. Um, agent and she was she managed uh sav rocker and so i um you know i I caught up with sav and he showed me around the eagles as well and um actually ended up giving me an eagles signed shirt which is pretty awesome and yeah uh you know so there's an australian connection of course there that we know uh the the australian connection is getting bigger and bigger each year in the nfl and it's, Mm. it's fantastic to watch now before i get your final thought can you tell me because You've been there. What's it like to be at the Super Bowl on the day? Oh, it is incredible. But I have to tell you, Maddie, and people might be disappointed in this, but please don't. I found it, it was a different experience, but I didn't find the excitement any different and the thrill within the stadium any different to a grand final. And I say that in a really positive way, in that our grand finals are incredible. They really are superb. And probably the only difference, obviously it's a different game yeah. in terms of different skills and you know, you're in a different country and whatever. But the only real difference that where there is where their game is is far more superior than ours really is the you know is is the, the entertainment. I mean yeah. who they're able to attract. But we're getting obviously a lot better than that. Um, at that end as well. And you know, and our Australian talent are superb. It's not putting them down anyway. It's just in terms of the, the calibre of the name that they're able to attract. You know, yeah. they attract the biggest the biggest spans, the biggest rock stars in the world. And that was that's probably the only difference. Um, Tom Petty actually was singing when I was there. Uh, and Alinda Keys. So, you know, so I uh, but I think the the year before when B Maybe Michael Jackson. No, you too the year before that I was spewing. I was like, oh, oh no. Well, um, you know, and the Michael Jackson, just how they do it. I mean, they're I just know. their halftime show. And you know what? I can't believe their ads. Um, the average cost for 30 second Super Bowl ad has, has increased, I read this, by 87% in the past decade. An ad, a 30 second ad is $5 million. Yeah. For 30 seconds, if you don't mind. But the ads are like watching a movie, they're, they're so good. Yeah. Yeah, you know, well, the, and, and, and yeah, and watching the halftime entertainment is like one, watching one of the greatest shows on earth. So. Yeah, and this Monday you've got uh, Justin Timberlake, and he's got a new yeah. album coming out. So I have no. I interviewed him before. He's a good guy. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, I interviewed just, him at the ESPYS. Yeah, it's pretty gee, cool. You're doing well with the name dropping, Tiff. Oh, no, oh, no, wow. Sorry, I just had to pick, pick, uh, yeah, pick myself up off the floor. <laughs> yeah, with Justin Timberlake, I'm sure you had to. All right, uh, now let's get your final thought. Uh, who wins and why? Well, I said it before, yeah. certainly the Patriots win. I, I just think they've got the experience. Yeah, they're, they're pretty much neck and neck, these two, these two teams. But they've got the experience. They know how to win. They've got Tom Brady and he's, you know, he can he pretty much uh, win a game single-handedly. So, and I just think they've got, you know, their receivers are good enough to be able to uh, complete the pass and the touchdowns. And, um, yeah, I, I see them winning probably by about 10. Yep, okay, very good. Now, uh, coming up next, we've got Wayne Schwoss, and um, and I remember when we did our episode earlier in the year uh, speaking about uh, breast cancer in the NFL and AFL and stuff like that, so we've got Schwatter doing a little bit for, for men's health coming up next. And, um, yeah, which is great. Yeah, it is certainly um, a fantastic thing that he's doing. So I want to say thank you again for being a friend of the program throughout the year, Tiff, and wherever you're watching Super Bowl 52 on Monday, have a sensational day and stay safe. Ah, thank you, Maddie, and all the best with the show. It's a great one, and thanks for having me on. My pleasure. Thank you. Enjoy the game. Joining us now is a very special guest. Um, He doesn't need much of an introduction. Basically, he's a a two-time premiership player of the North Melbourne Football Club. He's a best and fairest for the Sydney Swans. He's now turned a media commentator. But these aren't the accolades I want to talk about today. I'm talking none other than Wayne Schwoss. Wayne, you've been doing some amazing things in regards to men's health. I just wanted to ask you, can you tell us a little bit about this story and why you want to get such a strong message across? Yeah, thanks, Matty, for having me on. Uh, you know, I've, I've worked in the space of mental health for 13 years now, and that's the, uh, off the back of a few things. One, I've, you know, I've a lived experience with mental health conditions, so I, I understand the impact and the challenges that uh, a lot of people are facing when it comes to dealing with these types of insidious illnesses. I'm fortunate enough that I, um, you know, I've managed to develop a skill set, the support network, and the confidence to be able to deal with these things 
in a positive and productive manner. It took me a long time to get to that position. And a big part of who I am, you know, what, what really motivates me on a daily basis outside of my family is what can I do that helps people in the broader community that are struggling with these type of conditions. And that's something that I find incredibly rewarding. It's very challenging, but at a personal level and professional level, it's uh, something that I'm really passionate about. Uh, mate, it's just amazing because if I think back to your playing days at North Melbourne, to me, you were zippy, you were fast, you were tough. You know, it was like you had this amazing facade of this this tough guy that was just surrounded by so many other talented players and was a successful person. And really, you were, you know, going through some of the, the biggest challenges of your life. Yeah, I mean, that, you know, it's interesting when you're I mean, listening to you say that, feels like a chapter written so long ago, but the fact of the matter was that the perception was not a reflection of the reality. Um, I was still able to be a high-functioning, high-performing AFL football player, but um, on a personal level, I was really unwell. I was very sick, and um, I invested most of my emotional intelligence and energy, not, not into my football career, but I redirected all of that effort into making sure that I did everything I possibly could on a daily basis for 10 and a half years to hide the fact that I had mental health conditions. And, you know, that's, I can't get that time back, Matty. Yeah. Um, I, I, I once upon a time would have thought that they would have said that that was a regret of mine. But with the benefit of time and development and uh, accepting the situation, you know, I'm really grateful for that experience because... I've learned a lot more, more about mental health and emotional well-being. I'm a different person. I'm a better person. I'm far from perfect, but I'm grateful for that that experience because it's taught me so much. And I think importantly for anybody listening to this conversation, the thing that I would say is that and my story is no better or no worse than anybody else. It's mm. just my story. Yeah. But if anybody who's listening who's going through these challenges, you can still be very successful in your professional and personal life because I was able to do it while I had significant mental health conditions. Yeah, yep. A perfect example would be someone like Robin Williams, who was just an amazing actor and brought so much laughter to the world, but no one really knew what he was dealing with on the inside. Yeah, look, it's, I mean, that's, that's, that's a really terribly sad situation that he's a guy that brought so much joy to so many other people, yet internally he was obviously in a lot of pain, a lot of distress. And, and I guess one of the things, I mean, I, I, I have been very honest with regard to my own journey. And the reason that I do that is I'm trying to connect with people in the community, Maddie, to hopefully encourage them and give them the support and encouragement through my own journey that you, you, the moment you stop pretending to everybody else that you're happy and you're healthy and you're well, that actually gives you the opportunity to redirect your focus where it needs to be, and that is getting yourself healthy, getting yourself emotionally well again. Because when we spend our time pretending, lying, and hiding that we're okay, we're actually putting uh, further distance between our ability to get healthy and well again. Yeah. And it's so counterproductive, it doesn't help our situation. That's not to be critical. But I really am committed to trying to encourage people that the moment you ask for help is the moment you can begin to heal yourself. If I was to ask you, Wayne, who do you think, it's probably a very open-ended question, but if you are sort of battling these demons inside you and you don't really know how to get help, who, who would you say is the first person that you should try and reach out to within your, within your community? Yeah, that's a really, really good question, Matty. And I think family is an important first step. Um, but I think the most important person that anybody should be talking to as quickly as possible is your doctor. Yeah. Family are very important from a support network point of view, but in most cases, family are not qualified, nor do they have the experience or expertise to be able to deal with these, uh, these type of conditions. So my advice, my strong advice to anybody who may be in that situation right now, yes, talk to your family. But at the same time, make a time to go and see your GP, sit down with them, have an honest conversation about what's happening, how you're feeling, what you're thinking, because the sooner you do that, the sooner you can begin to develop a plan with your GP and a psychologist and psychiatrist with the support. 
support of your family and begin the process of starting to learn the skills and getting control of the situation again. Absolutely. Well, that's... I'll tell you what, Wayne, uh, I know you won two premierships. I know you're you're a, a mad cyclist and you're on TV and you're in the media, but for me, your biggest uh, achievement in life is certainly getting this message out to help a lot of other young men or older men or, you know, whoever's really dealing with it. Because I think everyone actually knows someone that's dealing with it and it's... it's well, I appreciate I appreciate that. I, I'm proud of my football career, but uh, I'm incredibly proud of the work that we now do and I'm I couldn't think of anything else I'd love to be doing. And you know what? We're so proud of you too that our good friends at 40 Winks, and in particular 40 Winks Hoppers Crossing and Serta, are going to give away a mattress valued at $4,000 um, just because we think that sleep is also very healthy and important. <laughs> um, and all, the, all, all of our listeners or uh, fans have got to do is just leave a comment on the YouTube uh, thread that this, uh, this episode will be on. You've just got to pick the winner and pick the final score of the winning team. And whoever comes closest will win that uh, mattress valued at $4,000 from Serta. It is a five-zone pocket spring mattress with gel-infused Dunlop foams that will help give you perfect skeletal alignment for when you're sleeping. As well as that, it will um, contour to the curves of the body to help you sleep perfect and have basically no pressure on you. So a massive thank you to uh, 40 Winks, Hoppers Crossing and uh, Serta. And uh, that's how much we wanted to say thank you for being on the show. Uh, it's a pleasure, Matty. Thanks very much for uh, having me on and uh, keep up. Now, very quickly, mate, Super Bowl 52, the Philadelphia Eagles yep. versus the New England Patriots. Who's going to win? Yep. Well, I'm going to be uh, a little bit controversial here. I'm hoping that Philadelphia cause an upset. And the reason why I say that is I want to see grumpy Bill Belichick do a post-game press conference. <laughs> mate, oh, he does, he'd be lucky to get two words out of him. I tell you what, we used to think that Mick Mulhouse, the coach of Collingwood and Carlton here in the AFL, was grumpy, but Bill Belichick, mate, he's in, a, he's in another universe. <laughs> he certainly is, yeah. You'd struck, you wouldn't want him to, uh, if he's got a daughter, uh, he, I can't imagine what the speech is going to be like at her uh, wedding. <laughs> no, no, but uh, look, it's, I mean, they're a great story. It's a, it's a, it's a great organisation, the Belichick Brady combination, um, you know, in. in, in uh, in their last game, in the opening half, it certainly didn't look as though they were going to make it their way through to a, uh, another Super Bowl final. But, you know, those two guys just know how to get it done. I, you know, Brody and Belichick have been a great combination for a long period of time. But I like the underdog. I'm going for, I'm going for Philadelphia. Absolutely. That is, uh, I like your pick and good on your Wayne. That's a, that's a very, very good um, way to think because uh, that's how us North Melbourne supporters were for a long time too. <laughs> <laughs> Wayne Schwartz. Thank you, Matty. Thanks for having me on the program. Thank you very much. Okay, last but certainly not least, we've got uh, the guest that has actually played in the NFL, and um, I know that you're a bit of a, uh, a New England uh, Patriots fan. Is that correct, Cole? It is correct, Eddie. Um, I've actually had the honour of meeting Mr. Robert Kraft um, just uh, before 2000, and he actually gave me a beautiful jacket that at the time at the back of it said three times Super Bowl champion. I, re- I believe after Monday it'll say six. I better change it. <laughs> <laughs> that's fair. Yeah. Well, that's right. So that's why I, I've given you the task of the Philadelphia Eagles. So, um, you know, it's they're the underdogs. Um, they don't have anywhere near the um, the type of accolades that the Patriots have got. Um, and this is their big opportunity. Wouldn't you agree? Hundred percent. I, I think you know. Look, just 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 looking at the quarterback fold that. Uh, you know, it took her over from the from when she was doing such a great job um, for him to come along, and the, you know he's just been deadly in the playoffs. And, you know, just when you thought the pressure would get would get to him, he's actually you know he has had no turnovers, and you know just what he did against uh, Minnesota two weeks ago. You know that was the number one defense in the NFL, and he went 352, 352 yards and three touchdowns, and just looked extremely comfortable and confident. Um, I just think this underdog tag will, will help them. Um, you know, great coach. The whole story of, of uh, Philadelphia is, is, is you know, the, the amount of players that they've lost this year and to be in this position to, to um, you know, what they did, you know, against the Vikings. Again, I, I was just, uh, I could not believe it. So, look, great coaches, great, great, great. You know, the whole system is absolutely um, very, very proud of the Philadelphia. I don't think they've won anything. Of course, they've 
been in the Super Bowl twice and they lost both of those. But um, I just hope in my heart that they can pull it out. But do I think they will win? No. <laughs> Well, you know, speaking of Nick Foles, right, he's got a, he's had a, a, I don't think many people know, he's got a quarterback rating of 92.7 over his last four seasons with the Eagles. Um, he's well rested because of the change up that happened throughout the season with the injury. Um, and I think that that might give them a different dynamic to their offense and maybe catch the Patriots defense off guard. Well, it works both ways, you know. You know, the reality is that Foles has never played against New England, and you can look at that. that that's a bonus, or it's a, you know, it can work against you because I honestly believe he's going to see a defense that he's never seen before. And and what I mean by that is is the is the the package that the New England will throw at him. He'll he'll be confused at times. There's no doubt. The New England are too brilliant, and the defensive coordinator Petrea is is just a genius, and he'll be. He'll be putting pressure on him, and he'll confuse him. But yeah, again, but they don't know. They don't know each other. Um, Foles has come in. He's got nothing to lose. Um, you know, mate, free spirit. I think he's been very well spoken. Seems very comfortable. He's, there's no ego with a bloke. He's, he's very, he's very well spoken, very intelligent, and he seems very confident as he should be after just you know just taking over the number one defense. You know, two weeks ago. So. Yeah, um, go, go, I, I, I hope he, yeah, we'll notice in the first half too. I really think that the Philadelphia will be in front at halftime, but I really think that Brady will come back in the second half and do his magic. But what Philadelphia needs to do is play two halves of football. They just can't design one half. They really need to in the second half. And this is where Jacksonville screwed up two weeks ago. They've got to take risk, calculated risk. You know, there was a couple of opportunities there with Jacksonville were fourth and one and fourth and two. They should have taken them. Jacksonville had the number one offense in the NFL. If you can't back your team, you've got to take risks against New England. And that is fourth and one. You've got to go. You've got to go. That changed the whole you know, dynamic when they went on the front of the ball, Brady came on and then just took over. You've got to take risks. And 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 Philadelphia got to design two halves of football and their players have got to believe that they can stop Brady at the end because he is so powerful and so good that he's already inside the heads of every player in the NFL that and fan that knows that he, no one can stop him. So um you know, it, it's going to be a great matchup. It's just uh, interesting to see Foles, who's completely an experienced backup quarterback against uh, the greatest of all time. And it's, it's. I think you know, you, you really did touch on a good point there because these calculated risks they're going to need to come from the coach, and that's Doug Peterson. So, a, a few stats that I don't know if many people actually know is that um, he's actually the first former uh, quarterback to ever be a head coach for the Philadelphia Eagles. So. You've got a former quarterback there that's going to be calling the calling the shots from the helm. He, he's a former Eagles player. He's done his apprenticeship under coach Andy Reid, who we know is, you know, uh, probably still has a, an eagle deep down in his heart, even though he's with the Chiefs now. And, you know, a really good, interesting stat about Doug Peterson is that he spent seven years as Brett Favre's backup QB. So, you know, it's not like he doesn't have uh, the experience or the talent or, or the mindset of, of some great footballers from before his time. You know, and it's a great point, you know, and you can look at a lot of head coaches, Maddie, and they've never even played the game before, and, you know, and some of them turn out to be genius, you know, just brilliant, Bill Belichick, right, has never, you know, never played, but, like, you just got a little Pedersen, it's just, you know, you're right, mate, he was a great quarterback and, and, and played under such, you know, incredible quarterbacks, and then Andy Reid as a coach, and, and to learn under him, he, he's just... You know, at the end of the day, the quarterback is a general. He's the one that makes or breaks the game. And for him to have such a great experience from a playing point of view and also being coached, um, it's just going to give him a real... It's going to give the quarterback, you know, foals. You know, and you can see why he is so good right now because Patterson is just a great coach for him right now as a former quarterback, coaching a quarterback. Uh, at the end of the day, mate, he's the general. Um, the fish stinks from the head down, and uh, if your quarterback's good, and, and you know, Foles was has been magic. So, look, uh, I just honestly believe in my heart that that uh, I don't know what they do. New England just bring up this magic and confusion, and um, it seems to uh, yeah, they're not going to number six for nothing, mate. And you know, if there is going to be that X factor for the Eagles. Um, my, I reckon it's going to be uh, Corey Clement at, at the position of running back. Give us, because if if they are to catch a team like the Patriots off guard, by you know, give us an idea of what's it like when you do run that ground and pound game 
and then try and keep the opposing quarterback off on the sideline. Yeah, it's critical, and and, and it's a it sounds like a broken record, but they've got to run the ball against this uh, this defense of New England, and it's not easy. But um, you know, the New England were ranked fifth in the league and scoring points, and and right up there on on, on yards allowed. So look, they've got to. You cannot have foals in a third and eight or a second and eight. You've got to be able to get the four, five, six, seven yards on a running game. If they do not run the game, it'll put too much pressure on Foles straight away. So straight away you'll be able to tell. Um, if the offensive line of Philadelphia, it's it's simple business. They've got to dominate New England and create holes. Um, yeah, and you're right, mate. I mean, you know, Clement and, and, and uh, you know, Blunt, you know, of course, it was, it was all, it was a formula with New England. They've just got to uh, create yardage and, and get the pressure off Foles. Foles has got to, he'll only be as good as, as the running, as the running team of Philadelphia. And, and, um, yeah, it'll be an interesting matchup. It'll be very interesting. <laughs> now, I know that I spoke to Tiffany Cherry about the Patriots earlier, but if, you know, who do you think is the, the main thing that there, that could be the X factor for the Patriots? I think they're, they're two wide receivers, Hogan and uh, Modelo. Um, they're, they're, they're tremendous. They're X factors, you know. And making up to Elderman, of course, who was the X factor from last year, of course, you know, receiver slot. Now he's out. So these two guys have taken over incredibly well. And of course, Gronowski, you know, let, let, let's see how he is after that concussion. Um, how fortunate that there was a two week gap here because he would not have played on the weekend. So. From what I'm hearing, he is going to play. And um, look, if if he isn't, I would say Philadelphia. That's how big an impact. Yeah. If Gronowski's out there and, and playing well, he will make the difference, mate. He is the game changer. The greatest tight end, I reckon, to ever play the game. Um, he's too big. He's hands. He's, he's everything. And he's great. He's, he's, he's great. He's, you know, safe, 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 safe guard. Yeah. So look, I'm... I'm I'm, I'm calling the, the X factor is definitely the, the two receivers, but Mike um, Gronowski is, Gronkowski, is a yeah. unique beast. <laughs> Ab- absolutely. Now, give us a bit of a plug for how you can uh, get down and uh, sort of have a bit of a party if you're in Sydney uh, to watch the Super Bowl. Absolutely. Man. We've got a massive party down at um, Coogee Bay Hotel, kicking off all the early punters at 8 a.m. Of course, kick off at 10.30. And thanks, buddy. Yeah, if anyone's out there in Sydney on... It's the only great Monday that you feel comfortable with two beers in your hand. Um, we've got a big party down at Quidditch Bay Hotel, buddy. I'm hosting it down there. Um, we've got a massive crowd coming. Great food, Budweiser, girls, Budweiser beer. <laughs> All the good stuff, mate. So um, we're going to have a big party down there, mate. Yeah, it's going to be great. All right, Cole, your final thought. Who wins and why? Uh, mate, simply, I know it's boring. In my heart, I, I really want Philadelphia to do this. I'm sort of getting sick of um, New England, but if I'm betting right now, without question, you are looking at the dynasty of the greatest quarterback, the greatest coach, the greatest owner in the history of the NFL. New England will win. Um, they will. Brady will, will do his thing in the second half. Would be surprised to see New England losing at halftime, but they'll come back and win by eight, ten points in the second half. There's no doubt. Um, I just think the pressure will get the foals. And Brady will stand up and, and go for uh, number five, which is an all-time record MVP, and six rings. I mean, and uh, he's the only one that will do that too, which it's going to be a great story, but New England for sure. Now, just before I sign off, Cole, I've got to say a couple of thank yous because this is the last episode for the season. Um, so a big special thank you to BR International for being our major sponsor throughout this year. Um, for this episode in particular, I want to say thank you to 40 Winks and um, Serta. Uh, so don't forget, if you want to win that mattress, the Distinction Medium, valued at $4,000, all you've got to do on the thread for the YouTube uh, channel is leave your mark of the winning team and their final score. So leave the, the winning team and the final score, and if you get it bang on, then um, you, you will win that mattress. Don't uh, Be careful. You don't want to put the same enter, a- answer in as someone else that's already entered, so look carefully to other people's um, entries. And, um, of course, I want to say a big thank you to James Brayshaw, Tiffany Cherry, uh, Wayne Schwoss, and you, Cole, you know, you're a personal friend. You're, you're, to me, you're the, you're, you know, the great uh, pioneer of uh, Australia and the NFL, so someone that played in a real big position, and you've just been absolutely sensational and a wonderful friend of the program throughout the years. 
Matty, you're a friend. I'm, I'm proud of you, buddy. You really are, mate. You're a winner and, and uh, beautifully spoken. And it better be a king size mattress because I'm entering. <laughs> entering <laughs> yeah, I think you'd need a king size, buddy. <laughs> All right. Yes, so, please. Super Bowl 52 in Minnesota, Minneapolis. Let's rock and roll. Thank you very much, Colin Scott. Yeah.